Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, babies in their diapers, welcome to the Tiberia Show with your host, Tiberius Boy! That's me, Tiberius! Today, we're going to talk about some very awesome stuff. We have a video about soccer, a book about a teacher and his seven kids, and we have a totally awesome guest. Today, we have the one, the only, the amazing Marlene Sharp. Marlene is a producer and runs her own business with pink poodles. <laughs> yes, here's one right here. She's not exactly pink, but um, she's mm. she's uh, red with excitement. How about she's that? cute, but... <laughs> <laughs> Today we're going to start off with the video of the week and this is going to be a kick. And now it's time for the video game of the week. Today's video game is kick off. So this is the game on the Roblox platform. This game is made by CM Games. Because it's on Roblox, you are able to play it on PC, Mac, Xbox, and even your cell phone. And it is free. Free is the best. Yeah, it is. Now this game yeah. is for soccer players, <laughs> and it's a game where there are two teams and you play soccer. That makes sense. Yeah, two teams. Mm -hmm. That so sounds right. The game, <laughs> and boy, does this place look cool. You might start in a game, but instead, I was in a room or lobby where I can chat with friends and do whatever you want except for commands, but then a game starts. Wow. Okay. I'm intrigued. Please, okay. tell me more. Well, then you can pass the ball and you can score a goal! Goal! My dog loves yes. that, by the way. She's, she's going for it. Oh, yeah. And you can even super kick it into the goal! Goal! While moving. Yes, you can run and make amazing shots. Also, the teams are Brazil and the USA. Yes, they don't even change the teams. Wow, they're really the committed team. to Brazil and USA. Okay, yeah. all right. Well, they're both fine, fine countries. True. Well, I give kickoff 5 out of 10 stars because it's so much fun to make good. Go! Oh! And even screaming Yay! with your friends. I think anyone who likes soccer should play this game. Smithlaw.com. You can call him at 407 801 2667. Wait, you are not Chuck. My dad can help when people get hurt. He loves to help people. If you are ever injured at work or in a car accident, you should call my friend Chuck. You can call him at 407 801 2667. That website again is CWSmithlaw.com. Offices, Orlando. Does it actually have that much W's? <laughs> Well, now it's time for the book of the week, because of Mr. Tarot. This book is written by Rob Broya, and I'm to the back of the book. In fact, Marlene, would you like to do the honors? Of course. Here we go. It's the start of a new year at Snow Hill School, and seven students find themselves thrown together in Mr. Tarot's fifth grade class. They don't have much in common, and they don't get along. Not until a certain new teacher arrives and helps them find strength inside themselves and in each other. But when Mr. Tarab suffers a terrible accident, will his students be able to remember the lessons he taught them? Mm. Well, That's this it. is an yeah. book that is for three whole points. It's rated for fifth grade in six months. That's good. So this book is fictional story about a fifth grade teacher and he had a variety of kids in the class seven of them so you got the kid the tricks the new kid the trickster the bully the class clown and even the smart one they are taught by their teacher to deal with lots of different issues like divorce and death and as well as family fighting over time the kids start to learn to get along nice hmm this sounds a lot like something i wrote i'm wondering if this guy Rob Buya read my script called Pearl of Wisdom. I'm really curious. I don't know. Yes. But then someone threw a snowball at the teacher by accident and he ended up in a coma. 
how can the snowball be in turn into a coma? Well, oh god. Well, now he's in the hospital, and everyone is trying to remember how their teacher got hurt. Well, each student remembered it kind of differently. Of course, the Rashomon like, uh, effect. I yes. can't tell you, so I give oh. because of Mr. Terab nine out of ten stars because I really like the relationship that the teacher had with his students and that he really wanted to move up with them into the higher grade. Oh, that's sweet. That's nice. And now it's time for our interview of an interesting person. Well, today's guest is going to be so much fun. Today we have the one, the only, the amazing Marlene Sharp. Marlene is a company called Pink Bottle Productions and has worked as a producer on the Cartoon Network series Sonic Boom. Yes, that's me. And we have a bonus. We have Blanche, who's the mascot of Pink Poodle Productions. She's a Bichon Poodle mix. Wow. So, first up, how are you enjoying being on the show? Oh, I love it. This is the most organized podcast that I have ever been on. And I've been on a few. So this is this is very impressive, this whole production. So congratulations. Well, thank you. And you are a producer and an IP strategist. Can you explain to my listeners exactly what that means? Yes. So a producer is a big title that encompasses a lot of different things. So producers can look for money to bring a project to the big screen or to audio, or a producer could work on the writing of scripts and also the visuals. So in animation, an animation producer might approve artwork and work with the artists to refine the look of the show. And also producers help with marketing and post-production and distribution, all different kinds of things. Wow. And um, as, yeah, it's, 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 there's so many different areas of specialization and different producers do different things. And um, an IP strategist just means that um, IP stands for intellectual property. And one of the things that I do is look for intellectual properties like books or old TV shows or video games or sure. toys that could be turned into TV series or movies. Nice. So I heard you worked yeah. on some stuff with Sonic. How much fun was it to work with such an awesome video game character? <laughs> Well, to be honest, Sonic is a tough boss. So he is an iconic character, as you know. And when I worked for Sonic, he was in his uh, a, a year where he turned 25. He turned 25 years old. So it was a very demanding year. We had to schedule a lot of activities, a lot of personal appearances and, and special things for Sonic's 25th birthday. So, uh, but it, it was a lot of fun. It was a good learning experience, and um, it was exciting to interact with the fans. Wow. So, how did you get started in being a producer? Well, I started my first job in Hollywood, because I live in Los Angeles. My first job in Hollywood was called temping, which means a person comes... You come to town, you register with what's called a temp agency, and they put you in different offices to try out different kinds of jobs for a set period of time. And usually uh, you're working as an executive assistant, so some, some kind of mm. low-level gopher <laughs> or uh, some, some kind of assistant to a big shot. And so I was placed at a company called Renaissance Atlantic Films that worked on Power Rangers and Digimon and a lot of Japanese cartoons that were based on video games and had toys associated with them. And so I worked there for two weeks and the gentleman who owned the business offered me a full-time job. And I was his only employee for five years. And he was a producer. And so he taught me a lot of things that he knew and I was wow. able to take that experience and use it in the future for other jobs. Mm -hmm. So how long have you been doing this? 
a very long time. And that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> wow. I, I do not want to reveal my age or anything close. So I mean, um, I want to reveal your long age because you do. <laughs> so. Well, people can do the math. So uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm too shy. On, like, if they know like when you were born. That that's true. We'll just leave it at a long time. And, yes. and so yes. how did you know that this was the go-to job for you? I did not know. Uh, actually, the go-to job for me was to be an actress. And that's what I studied in school. And I auditioned a lot, even while being a producer for a long time. I would sneak away from my job and go to auditions. And when I'd, I'd book an acting role, I'd have to make up excuses as to why I couldn't be at work for periods of time. And so that got to be stressful after several years. So I cut back on the acting, the but yeah. <laughs> yes, I was, the producing was taking up way more time and more important, it was paying a lot more money than my that acting. So that, that's what took priority. Now you are running your own company. Can you tell me more about that? Yes. Pink Poodle Productions is what I like to call forced entrepreneurship. And that's because two and a half years ago, I lost my full-time job. I was working for a company called Level 5, which is a Japanese video game company that had an office in Los Angeles. And unfortunately, the home office in Tokyo decided they didn't want any offices outside of Tokyo anymore. So they closed our Los Angeles office and I didn't have another job waiting for me. So Pink Poodle Productions became my job. And I've always done a lot of freelance projects and consulting work. So I called my business Pink Poodle Productions before that, but I, I wasn't really working full time with Pink Poodle Productions, but after I lost my job at level five, Pink Poodle Productions became my, my full time focus. And that's what I've been doing ever since. What was one thing that you learned about yourself while being a producer at Sonic Boom? One thing that I learned is that I need more ways to manage my stress. I need better ways to manage my stress because there was a lot of stress at that job and it caused me to worry a lot and I lost out on a lot of sleep. So I definitely need to work on that skill. Mm. Stress, ma stress management. Mm. So does it take a lot of formal training to be able to become a producer? No, not really. Uh, you can become a producer you can just claim yourself as a producer and then you you are one but you, it helps to produce things um so that that's the one key you need to produce stuff to be a producer and there are some formal training programs at film schools uh let's see U, ucla and usc and nyu those are some famous film schools that offer producing programs undergraduate and graduate but it's not necessary. There are plenty of producers who haven't had any formal training. Wow. Now it says that you are a freelancer. Can you explain what that means? Yes. A freelancer is a term that means, what does it mean? It means you work for a lot of different companies and you, you have many jobs. And sometimes people who are entrepreneurs can also be called freelancers because they're working for many companies at one time instead of just one. Mm. So what is the best part about working as a freelancer? Well, I guess you have more control over your time because you don't have one company telling you to go into an office and spend a certain amount of time there. You do have more freedom yeah, so I guess that would that would be the best thing. Mm. So what was the one thing that when you started to work in producing that you did not expect? I, well, I expected as a producer to get credit on most of the projects that I worked on. Credit like 
on the screen that says producer. But what I did not expect was to do a lot of the producer work and have somebody else take credit for it. And that's what happened a lot, unfortunately. Oh, no. And that's a fairly common practice in Hollywood that someone will do a lot of work and maybe they'll have to leave the project early for some reason or or maybe there is no reason. Uh, maybe somebody is, is investing in the show, the production, and they just feel that they want the credit that you were supposed to have. So uh, it can be quite a, a cutthroat fair. business. I know it's not fair, um, but it happens. So again, stress management becomes very important in these kinds of situations. Mm. We have yes. to fix that. Government, walk on it. I'm kidding. <laughs> Good. Yes, I, I agree. I agree 100%. <laughs> So what is the hardest part about being a producer? It's working with a lot of crazy personalities. That's for sure. And sometimes the biggest celebrities can be the craziest. So it helps to have a very easygoing and uh, forgiving attitude when working with all these different kinds of personalities. Mm. So what is the one thing that you would that you think would make your job easier? Well, if I could bring Blanche with me on all of my shoots and uh, mm -hmm. meetings and things like that, I, I think that would make it easier because she is kind of like my therapy dog and my emotional support. And so I think that would make it easier. It's not always possible. Although I've noticed since the pandemic, places are much more forgiving and accepting of, of animals. So I have been able to bring her in a lot more places. So mm -hmm. that's good. So what advice should you give to my listeners if they wanted to grow up and be, become a producer? I would say to do what you're doing, Tiberius. You, you're you doing it. You're creating your own show. You and your dad are producers. And other kids can do that too in different ways. Just Produce stuff, create stuff, and get it out there on YouTube or Instagram or whatever realized. kind of I am a social. Producer. You are a producer, not, absolutely. Not just because of the show. We produce stuff no. on my pre on my three D printer. Oh yes, yes, uh, yes. You, you're a a, a producer, a producer of merchandise and objects. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we own yes, a whole lot different... of stuff. Yeah. Well, wow. you're doing it. So that, that, that's the only requirement, to just get out there and do it. I am a producer. <laughs> well, yes, now I have are. to ask, why did you name your company Pink Poodle Productions when your poodle isn't even pink? Well, pink is my favorite color, mm. and I love poodles. And I also love vintage stuff, like from the 1950s. And people in the 1950s used to dye poodles pink a lot. Oh. And they're, they're pet poodles. And then um, pink poodles, like the like art, cartoon art of pink poodles would show up on stationery and merchant, other kinds of merchandise. And I just think that's really cool. And so I wanted a company name that would make me feel good and think of things that I liked every time that I say it. And so... It just well, seemed to fit. Do you want to dye your poodle's hair pink? No, I wouldn't. That's way too much trouble. <laughs> no, I, I, I'll, yeah, I, I stop at the, it been at good, the point of it would be naming good. the company. Yeah, but I wouldn't sure. put her through that. No, she, would, she probably wouldn't stand for it either. <laughs> so what is the one message that you want to get out to the kids all over the world about working in Hollywood? I would say it's very important to make as many friends as you possibly can because this is a business about relationships and it's about having good relationships, strong relationships, and maintaining them for a long period of time. And you never know who you meet 
it, how, how that person will influence your life. They might inspire you to create something wonderful, or they might have an opportunity for you, or they might be a comfort to you when somebody takes credit for the work that you've done and then puts their name up there on the screen. So I would say be friends with everybody and be kind to people and just keep going. Because you're a producer, can't you produce your name up on there? It's not that easy because there are often a lot of what you call stakeholders in a project. And I might be one out of many producers and I might not be the producer in charge of the credits. And also the producers who are actually investing money into a project, they're the ones who have the most power. So if they don't want something or if they want something, then they will get, get their way. So, yeah, it's well, not always up to me. Should you put all the producers up there? You should. Yes, you should. But, this make sense again... <laughs> it takes a whole lot of producers to produce a movie. Oh, yes. Oh, and, yeah. and especially animation. I don't mm -hmm. know if you've ever watched the credits at the end of an animated movie, but they go on forever. It's so true. many people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It also says that you are a journalist. What stuff do you write about? Yes. Well, I write a lot about Blanche. That's for sure. Um, occasionally, I, I'm the ghost writer for Blanche. So she will write something or she will dictate it to me. And then I will, you know, type it because her, her paws don't type as fast as mine. Um, but we've, we've, we've done some, some dog centric articles together. And then I write about animation, video games, podcasts. I love podcasts and a lot of just entertainment interviews, all different kinds of things. But I found that writing articles about people is a really great way to meet new people because most people like to have attention on themselves. So if there's somebody really cool and maybe famous that I want to meet, I'll offer to do an interview for them well, I have online. A good yeah. I have a question. Well, what? Who is Blanche? Because most people here don't know who <laughs> Blanche is. Oh, so, good you point. Said Blanche so much. How do we know yes. who Blanche is? Well, she's right here. She is my. My Bichon Poodle mix, ah, right, okay. right here. She's never far away, um, and she's she's my business partner, my muse, and uh, the chairwoman of Pink Poodle Productions. And she's actually a Bichon Poodle mix, but she identifies as both a Bichon Frise and a Poodle. So wow. she's fine with the business being called Pink Poodle Productions. So don't worry about that. Mm -hmm. So I run a show and podcast that talks about God during my Lion Strong segment. How do you include God's message in your work? Wow, that's that's a good question. Um, I might not be so good at that. Uh, I, I was raised Catholic, so I went all through Catholic school, and I was a really good Catholic when I was younger. And then uh, I kind of... I guess I kind of slacked off. So I'm glad you brought that up, though, Tiberius, because that is something that I need to work on. Um, mm -hmm. I like I like things that have positive messages, and it's just one step further to go and mm -hmm. and include include God and spirituality in there. Mm -hmm. So, what is the craziest thing that has happened while you were doing your passion? Wow, the craziest thing. Well, um, I worked with a musical artist named Paul McCartney. I don't know if you know who he is, but he was part of a singing group called the Beatles, and they're pretty famous. And I've heard of the Beatles Paul, before. yeah, so he's one of the Beatles, and I worked on a movie with him called High in the Clouds. The movie's never been it, it hasn't Released. come out yet but anyway when i was working with paul mccartney he he would never give us very much notice when he was coming to the office he would just 
have his assistant call maybe about a half an hour ahead of time and say, Paul's coming to the office. He'll be there in a half hour. And so everybody in my office would go into a panic and somebody would run to the store and get this special British food that he liked to eat. And then we'd all clean up and it was almost like a f fire drill every time he came over because he couldn't schedule, he, he was too busy to schedule an appointment to come and work with us. So Whoa. we just always had to be ready. So I had many crazy experiences where we, we'd we get noticed that Paul McCartney's coming, Paul McCartney's coming. And fun. we were totally caught off guard. So <laughs> well, what is all the Paul the McCartney experiences. And how did it change as a person? The biggest mistake I ever made, well, Sometimes I have to admit I am a bit gossipy and mm. if some if I feel that somebody has hurt my feelings or wronged me I'm I'm not very good at confronting people to their mm. face I'm more likely to talk smack about them behind their backs and so I've had the experience where I've talked badly about people behind their backs but didn't know that they were listening and gotten a lot of trouble so yeah, not pr not proud of those times, but I'm they happened. Not to and laugh, but that was <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I'm telling you the truth here, Tiberius. I'm not sugarcoating it. Yeah. <laughs> so well, you're getting all the dirt. <laughs> true. Now, can you tell me that one story? You know, remember this is a kid show, but that one story. Yeah. Hmm, <laughs> well, that you're not supposed to tell me about. Come on, you can tell me. Okay. That. Oh, no, no, I'll tell, I'll tell you. I have so many of those stories. Um, so I was not born into a family that has a lot of show business connections, but I've always wanted to be that person who has a lot of show business connections. So um, sometimes it required me to crash parties and show up at places where I didn't have a legit invitation. And so um, there's a filmmaker who I used to really like a lot. His name is Woody Allen. And one of my goals in life was to meet Woody Allen, but but not not to have a romance with him or anything like that. I just wanted to work with him. I wanted him to cast me. I wanted to write scripts with him and so forth. So one time he came to Los Angeles and um, he is, in addition to being a filmmaker, he's also a jazz musician. So he's playing music at this jazz club and the performance was totally sold out and I could not get tickets, it was impossible. And so I snuck backstage and I was escorted out by security and then I snuck back in again. I must have snuck in like three times before I really got in huge trouble and then, um, and then nothing really horrible happened. Luckily, there was no restraining order that came from that. I didn't get hauled off by the police, but it was really embarrassing. And I was so determined to meet Woody Allen that night. And it just didn't happen. So, um, yeah, that was pretty crazy. Uh, I don't know that I would do that again today, but I was a lot younger and more sure. fearless. Because you would probably and then, for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like so that's when you're fine. That but, was one of the crazier things. Yeah, that's like a crazy thing. But is there anything else you think my listeners should know about you? Well, if you want to check out my website, that would be cool. It's www.pinkpoodleproductions.com, and you'll see a lot of photos of Blanche and me in action, and mostly me, but cool. there is well, quite a bit do you of Blanche. Have Facebook? Too. Yes, I'm on Facebook as Marlene Sharp and, but my, my social media jam is really LinkedIn. I am a maniac mm. on LinkedIn. As I think your dad might be able to tell you, I've already posted about this show on LinkedIn twice. And uh, this is even before we recorded. You didn't even tell me, so. you didn't even tell me. <laughs> what? So <laughs> I can send you the links afterwards. So okay. no, no worries, so you can see all that. Yeah, I posted about, I actually posted about an award that you got about being one of the 50 most influential kid influencers or something. Um, your dad had posted and I reposted. So, yeah, so wow. LinkedIn is really, that. that's where I am all the time. That's where your jam is. You know all the controls. You know everything. 
Yes, yes. Well, what is that one question that you think I forgot to ask you? Um, wow. Uh, maybe, where did I go to school? Well, where did you go to school? Well, I'm originally from New Orleans, Louisiana, and so... I went to high school at a place called Mount Carmel Academy, and then I went to college at Loyola University in New Orleans, and then I went to graduate school to study musical theater, and I went to San Diego State and got a Master of Fine Arts in Musical Theater. That's where I went to school. Well, thank you, Marlene, for being my special guest. Can you stick around for Math Corners? Of course. Wouldn't miss it. Over 40 years, Playhouse Central Florida has provided education, independent life skills, and job training to thousands of Central Floridians who live with blindness or any degree of vision loss. Whether it's picking out clothes in the morning or just moving around your community and serving Orange, Seminole, and Osceola counties, contact Playhouse Central Florida at 407-898-2483 or visit them online at PlayhouseCFL.org. Thank you so much, Marlene, for your help with Math Corners. Today, we're going to talk about the commutative property of addition and multiplication. Wonderful. I can't wait to hear more about it. Well, we have been talking a lot about algebra lately, and today we are going to talk about the different properties of math. The commutative property is addition, and it says that when two numbers are added, the sum is the same regardless of the order in which the numbers are added. There is a little more. Because that means that if x plus 5 equals 8, then 5 plus x will also equal 8. Hmm. Fascinating. Mm-hmm. And it sounds familiar. I think I must have learned that in school at some point. Yep, 7th grade. I mean, no, actually 5th. But <laughs> well, <laughs> you also have the community property of multiplication. Now, that says when two numbers are multiplied, the product is the same regardless of the order in which the numbers are multiplied. So that means if x times 5 equals 15, then 5 times x will also equal 15. Well, Wonderful. this property That's is very important great. in algebra since it would be used to move around the variables in an equation. I see. Mm-hmm. So Marlene, do you know all about the commutative property? Hmm. I guess so. Yeah, you explained it pretty well. But you it know, it's a little my... bit confusing when there's like parentheses and stuff. I'll let you know that. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. But you know what? My boyfriend is actually a famous mathematician, so I could ask him to go into more detail after the show is over. I didn't know that. So my yeah. teacher said that I would use math every day. Do you have to use math in being a producer? Sometimes. I try to avoid it, though. I'm not so good at math. But, yeah, math is a fact of life. True. Well, thank you so much, Marlene, for your help with Math Corners. You're welcome. You're welcome. And now it's time for the Heart of a Lion. As you know, we talk about the qualities of living by the Heart of a Lion which stands for leadership, integrity, obedience, and nobility. This week, we're going to talk about leadership. For me, I think leadership is the act of loving what is good, having self-control, and being disciplined. The qualities of leadership are providing guidance and direction, organization, and being a positive influence on others. Well, this week, I saw leadership with the guy running the axe swimming shop downtown. For my birthday, I got to throw some axes on a board. Not my dad, but it was a <laughs> lot of fun, and the guy was running that was running it showed me how to safely enjoy the axe throwing without getting hurt by the axes. Well, he provided guidance and direction to ensure everyone still had their fingers and toes when they were done throwing the axes. Well, he was a positive influence on others and made sure we all had fun. So, Marlene, did you see or use leadership at all this week? 
I saw it for sure. I saw it in my podcasting networking group that I belong to called Pod People. And Pod People sponsored this really great virtual event called Speed Dating. But it wasn't the kind of speed dating that people use to find dates, like social dates. It was meant to be a networking event so that all these people who are professionals in podcasting could meet each other and help each other to find jobs and collaborate on projects and things like that. So this team of people that works at Pod People, they organized this whole event and they were very very disciplined in the way they scheduled it and they put the groups together and they they tried to do matchmaking according to people's interests it was really cool so it's a whole whole team that showed a lot of leadership skills well of all of the heart of a lion virtues which is your favorite i guess integrity integrity is pretty important mm -hmm. well we should always try and be lion strong in everything we do shouldn't we Yes, absolutely. Midstate Fire has been providing top quality fire equipment services for three generations to the Central Florida area. Don't wait for an emergency to repair. Call Midstate Fire today at 407-246-8855. Get your fire extinguishers and emergency lighting for both your home and businesses by visiting www.midstatefire.com. That number again is 407-246-8855. And that's our show, folks. I want to thank the one, the only, the amazing Molly Sharp for Whoa! being on my show. Thank you, Tiberius. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> thank you. It has been so much fun talking to you to today. Maybe one day I hope we get to visit you when you're working on set. Yes. Please come anytime. And uh, if you want to see me in the in the interim, you can look for me on social media. I, I'm Marlene Sharp on Facebook. I'm also Marlene Sharp on LinkedIn. And my website is www.pinkpoodleproductions.com. Also, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram at The Tiberius Show. And please be sure to visit The Tiberius Show on YouTube and like and subscribe. Also, be sure to listen to us next week on The Tiberius Show with your host, Tiberius Moore!